So first all of right. all, we first, cheers, cheers for episodes. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for being here. Yes. Thank you for the invite. Mm-hmm. So um, <clears throat> I want you to first just tell people who don't know, because we know you, but let other people know like who you are really quick. Don't bore the people. Just, <laughs> just let them know a little bit about who you are. All right. I'll do the best that I can. Yeah. <laughs> Start with the name or... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. Name. It's just uh, sounds kind of weird when I say my name. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> Most of us <laughs> so, feel the same way. Right. Yeah. right. Ivan, Sanchez, Lucas. So two, two last names. Yeah, it's not as long. Some people have like two first names and then like two last names. Like, right. A little tricky. <laughs> uh-huh. But uh, yeah, I've been in the industry, the restaurant industry for years. It's uh, It's been my passion, my career, uh, something that I grew up doing and mm-hmm. love and enjoy doing. So. And, you know, we appreciate you uh, bringing some wines in today. The you know, Chardonnay. Something, something. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Chardonnay. Chardonnay, yes. So this is from your own uh, private label. At yes. The restaurant. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we, we actually just got that uh, in last week. So it's relatively Oh, this is new. fresh. Fresh. Brand new. Yes. That's why the labels look all crispy. <laughs> and it just came <laughs> off the press. Okay. I get that. All right, so um, run through a little bit of like the selections that you brought for us today. So the I, I love wine, right? So me too. It's a, <laughs> it's amazing. I think personally, mm-hmm. uh, given the fact that uh, we don't currently hold a liquor license, and I enjoy wine, so we figured why not have our own label? So mm. something that I've done for other restaurants. It's uh, it's neat. You know, mm-hmm. it also gives you that uh, uniqueness to to the business. Yeah. Uh, so this is a company up in Napa. It's called the uh, Rutherford Wine Company. So they do this for several different uh, businesses. So much as I would love to be the only one and be very special, mm-hmm. it's not necessarily <laughs> the case. But the wine itself, it's it's good wine. So the Chardonnay is my personal favorite. Uh, it's got buttery notes. It's uh, toasted notes. It's it's got a little mm-hmm. bit of that uh, acidity at the back end, but nothing nothing crazy. Uh, it's a drinkable, especially for a day like today. That's very very warm. It's yeah, delicious, yeah, so. it's great. And it's and it's uh, shards. I usually don't go for those Mm-mm. because they used to. We call them the beer wine because it's like the the one that you have. Literally, it's like the house wine. It's like mm-hmm. all over the place. Everybody has it. It's like when they say house wine, they're gonna bring you a chardonnay. And I usually don't go for them because of that reason. And then, you know, my palate has now exceeded Chardonnay's. Become Excuse advanced. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me while I sip something else. Um, but tasting this one is definitely, it's delicious. Like as soon as we popped it open and I taste it, I said, this is definitely a different type a of different Chardonnay. A different type of Chardonnay, yeah. So explain a little bit about like the notes for some people who don't know, like what that means. Mm-hmm. In terms of a uh, buttery, and, yeah. you know, other notes that you said there in the shard. I, I see Chardonnay and the way that I learned it. Uh, and again, don't quote me. I could be wrong. <laughs> no, we, we but, putting that as a, as a quote on Instagram. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's think of it. Think of it as any other liquid, right? Especially let's take milk and cream per se, mm-hmm. right? So you have milk. It's got more fluidity. You know, it's kind of like the lighter you have mm. uh, cream mm. tends to be heavier, you know, like body weight. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a, a wine as well. So full body, kind of a lot more richer, you know, more of the weight on the yeah. mouth feel. Like a mouth feel. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So that's kind of the analogy, you know, when you put cream on a coffee, you know, you, you feel that like yeah. weight. Yes. Yeah. So it's the same on a wine when it has like a lot of oak, it's that buttery component, you know, that's like. Too heavy. Yeah, it's heavy, heavy on the yeah. palate. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, versus something that's uh, stainless steel. It's going to be lighter, brighter, right? Mm. Uh, as far as the notes itself, I mean, it, it's defined a few different ways. You know, there, there's character to the wine, uh, whether it could be fruit components, you know, whether it could be uh, apple notes or pear notes or tropical, depending on the wine itself, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc, for example, most of them, or some of them, I should say, depending on where they come from, have uh, qualities like grapefruit. Right, great yes. fruit notes. So yes. those are the notes, you know, the fruit components. Uh, and then you move on to red, which there's 
I don't know anything from cigar boxes to actual cigars to leather, depending um, on the wine. Like deep, deep Correct. fruit, right? Yes. I think it also has to do with the individual. You know, it's a mm-hmm. uh, wine. It's it's subjective. You know, palates are different. Mm-hmm. So depending on what the individual enjoys to consume, you know, when it comes to uh, food and uh, whether it might be sweets or fruits, vegetables. So yeah. That's a lot to do with it, like. Uh, at least for me, that's one of the things that I've noticed. For a red wine, I like the darker fruit, you know, blackberries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Nars have the cherries, but even those can be made with like that cherry that's like dark and mm-hmm. ripe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's again, that's where those uh, those nuances come into play with the wine. So, Did you like go through training to learn that much about wine or is it kind of through experience? Or yeah. you said you've been in the industry for several years. Like, was it through those previous jobs or like how did you learn so much about it yeah. it's it's been a combination you know a little bit of reading um a lot of drinking you know mm-hmm. again we go back to it tasting yeah <laughs> it's uh, that's my favorite part palettes yes yeah. yes each individual's palate is unique you know subjective mm-hmm. so yeah i could drink the chardonnay and tell you that it's sweet you know but you might think it's more on the citrus or acidity or more you know, like more minerality to it that right. would be your palate. I was going to say based on like other things that I've drank, like you don't know what I've drank. So Correct. <laughs> like what I'm comparing it to. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Correct. Um, so just through interacting with a lot of reps, you know, there's, mm. there's people in the wine world, they have portfolios, different wineries that they work with. They'll bring the wine so the buyer can taste them. Right. So yeah, I learned the most at Craftsman Tavern. So they had a retail wine license or a retail license and we started selling wine. And after that, like a few years later, I started uh, learning more and more about wine. At first Mm. it was supposed to be boutique wines, but Mm -hmm. those were really, really hard to put out on the market. Uh, When people don't know the brand or the wine itself, it's hard, even if the wine is good, you know. Mm -hmm. Interesting. We're just creatures of habit, you know. We don't know. It's hard for us to just venture and be like, oh, Mm -hmm. let's go learn, let's go find out, you know. Right. Yeah. And very, very cool. You know, it's just mm-hmm. sharing that knowledge. And yeah. Through that as well, I did some, uh, some training. I took Coro Master Sommelier entry level. Mm. Yeah. It was, it was, it was amazing. Mm. Know, How so. was that? It was, uh, it was done in, uh, Florida, Miami. So I went over for a week. Uh, super cool. Mm-hmm. Amazing experience. There were, uh, I think about 50 or 60 people. Uh, it's a paid course. It's a mm-hmm. certification that you get. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you do lineup of different wines, you'll taste them. You'll talk about the characteristics that you would feel on the palate or the nose, you know, that mm-hmm. you would think the wine has to offer. And everybody would share. And then the sommeliers would be like, yes, you're right. Or no, you're you're wrong based on this and that. Oh, interesting. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. would like to take a class like that for fun. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, a lot of fun. Just, uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, just to be able to know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then also like there's that, confidence too right or mm-hmm. you know if the sommelier is coming by and be like you are correct or yes. no you're wrong mm-hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> being able to have that conversation with an expert can be like so helpful oh for sure yeah well funny story i don't know if it's funny actually but let's hear it so there's there's some varietal <laughs> right mm-hmm. there's some varietal it's a varietal it's a french varietal um i can't think of the name right now actually it's a uh, gamay that just came to me uh-huh. So I had never tried that gamay before. Like I went to uh, to the event and they put, sure thing, like they put that wine in front of us. Of like course. that was one of the wines we're supposed to taste <laughs> and decipher. And I'm smelling it. So the only, it, and I guess they're right out of, uh, well, I, I don't think I guess that I, I knew it, you know, but the only reason why I knew it is because through a conversation with one of the reps, we were talking about gamay. We're talking about Pinot Noir. And then so you've never tasted it, but you knew. I never tasted it, yes. Oh, interesting. So the rep was telling me what the nose had to offer. And they so like, yeah, maize, they're like, it's just like, it's not like any other wine. You know, they, they mass produce it and they try to like have it out on the market as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just drinkable right so away. So it's not aged or. Well, you know. the serious ones are, but typically oh. because again, people like that type of wine, mm-hmm. you know, in that type of, in that, in that region, uh, they, they just bring it out as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. So the notes, he's like, oh, think of bubble gum. You know, you literally get bubble gum on the nose. You put your nose to the glass and you get bubble gum. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So I grab the glass, put it to my nose and I'm like, oh, this is gamay. I was like super <laughs> excited. I'm like, I know this one. 
Yeah. Right. So then, uh, cheers, guys. Right. <laughs> so uh, that's incredible that yeah. you can identify some, you know, something you've never tasted mm-hmm. before, but you had the knowledge yeah. of what it was supposed to taste mm-hmm. like or smell like, and you were able to do that. Yeah. Well, I think that's also part of recognition. You know, it's yeah. uh, the more you do something, the better you get at it. And mm-hmm. I think that's also the case for uh, master sommeliers. I think they've tried some of the wines at least once or twice to be able to really mm-hmm. know the wine and remember mm-hmm. it. Right, because I, I still think it's pretty crazy. They'll master Sam will put the the glass to the nose and be like, "Oh, this is a nineteen sixty Merlot or Bordeaux." Oh, even the year, I can't yeah, even yeah, like those those master Sams can tell you like <laughs> what what the expressions of that wine is. You know, whether it's fruit or or, yeah. or uh, vegetables or spices to uh, the chateau. You know, the winery that made it, oh, and some some of them know like even the winemaker of like that specific era. So. We want to invite you to listen to the Same Business, Different Day podcast, where we sit down with business owners, entrepreneurs, and great minds to talk about their stories and how they got to be as successful as they are today. If you're a business owner, this is the show for you. You get the tips and tricks from people just like yourself. If you're an aspiring entrepreneur, this is the show for you. You get to hear from some of the best storytellers about their journeys. If you're an avid podcast listener, this is the show for you. We release every Tuesday morning on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to Same Business, Different Day. We make this show just for you. San Diego beer lovers, come join us on the Pioneer Beer Trail, a free narrated tour of four of Vista's iconic craft brewers, all from the convenience of your phone. Simply download the free show at vistamadetours.com or find Vista Made Tours on your favorite podcast provider, like Spotify or iTunes. Then fire up the show and you'll hear fascinating backstories, beer favorites, and food recommendations from the brewers themselves as you travel from spot to spot. It's free, fun, and the easiest way to learn about some of Vista's originals, including Booze Brothers, Belching Beaver 980, Aztec, and Five Suits. So come travel the Pioneer Beer Trail at vistamadetours.com or from wherever you find your podcasts. Hello, friends. This is Joe Samo from the Samo Law Group. I am the host of Run It By My Lawyer. Over the years, I've had so many people that have had legal issues and legal questions and legal concerns. And I always, over the more than 20 years, I've been telling people, before you sign anything, before you do anything, if you have a problem, just run it by my lawyer, (laughs) right? Just run it by me. And now I have a podcast doing just that. You can call me, you can email me, any questions you have. I love hearing from people and answering legal questions. And on our podcast, we've talked about uh, everything from free speech, uh, gun rights, you know, anything you want to discuss, employment rights, everything. So you have an issue, you know, run it by my lawyer and watch this podcast. You'll be entertained and you'll learn the law. Love to see you. You can find me anywhere, okay? Uh, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, whatever you want. And if you can't find me on some platform, let me know and I'll come find you. All right, thank you. Starting the restaurant, because you have this restaurant, Madero, which is delicious. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Delicious. Thank you. I'm going Fabulous. to, I'm, I'm going to explain it first in terms of a consumer, okay? I know that when I first came there, because you had invited some exclusive people to a tasting. I was one of them. Uh, You're welcome. (laughs) And I remember thinking that this is elevated Mexican food, which a lot of people hear Mexican food in California, especially, and they immediately go tacos, food truck. Like this is Mm -hmm. where, this is, this is where the good Mexican food is at. Right. Yes. Like you're not getting it from anywhere else. You're only going to get it from like the food truck. And when I came there and saw And I think part of this, too, is like me now living with a chef. I'm starting to appreciate presentation of food more Mm. because you sometimes just put it in front of me. I'm going to eat it. (laughs) I don't care what it looks like, you know, just as long as it it tastes good, it's seasoned, like all of these different things. But when you were bringing out those samples, I started to like look at the presentation of it. And I was like, wow, this is elevated. Like it's on a whole new even when you bring out the empanadas which is one of my favorite the shrimp ones 
And then you had, uh, it was this uh, ceviche. The ceviche at your restaurant. I've told you this, but I need to tell the people. Listen, people. (laughs) The ceviche at this man's restaurant is on a whole nother level. Because for one, I was so used to food truck ceviche and you know different. these different mm-hmm. yeah it's like it's kind of like watery it's still good yeah but it's mm-hmm. more the texture is more watery mm-hmm. it's almost like a salsa mm-hmm. kind of like feel to it but yours was so fresh like i could see the fish i could see the cucumbers i could see the tomatoes mm-hmm. and the, even the pepper on it i could see all of that mm-hmm. and that right there like put you in on like the map anytime i'm there that's always my go-to it's like Bring me the ceviche. I don't care what else y'all got cooking back there. <laughs> Bring that first. That's the first thing I want to like hit my palate. But yeah, just kind of talk about like what even got you started to like do your own thing. So I grew up in it. So that's really mm. all that I know. Mm. Everything that I've learned up to date has been through this industry. It's through communicating with just about any kind of individual, you know, mm-hmm. um, with all different knowledges, you know, walks of life, if you will. Mm-hmm. So everybody's so different. And most of the people that I've encountered, they've been, uh, they've been generous enough to share their knowledge, you know, yeah. whether it be a lawyer, an architect, a doctor. Um, and it's been pretty cool. It's been mm-hmm. a very, very cool um, experience for me. I think uh, the restaurant industry is more than just about food. It's mm-hmm. about people. It genuinely mm-hmm. is about people. You know, mm-hmm. it's people that come into the restaurant with a group, you know, with their better halves, with family and friends to have a good time. Mm-hmm. And the food is just kind of plus, you know, everybody's got to eat, right? It's, yeah. it's fuel to our bodies. Uh, but I think it's more about those connections. You know, it's more about people. It's mm-hmm. more about being able to give back and in the form of knowledge and eventually to the community, you know, whether it be yeah. through fundraisers, mm-hmm. uh, donations or whatnot. So that's that's the biggest one, mm-hmm. right? And we could do that through, again, through a healthy business, through P&L, through financials, through profits. Yes, but going back to your question, I think mm-hmm. I deviated a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, the food, right? The, the cuisine. So yes. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, the elevated Mexican food. Like, yes. how, how do you guys achieve that? And Well, when we first started, it was uh, a lot of people that come in from, like, the previous restaurants. They were like, there's a lot of Mexican restaurants around, right? There's uh, there's a dime a mm-hmm. dozen. Like, how are yep. you guys going to be different? Mm-hmm. Right? Well, that's, that's what we're working on, you know. We're working on... Not a super high end restaurant, but also not a taco shop. You know, nothing, exactly. nothing wrong with either, right? There's, yep. there's a market and a place for them. Mm-hmm. We again, we want to cater to the community. You know, we want to do something that's mid level, uh, and the, the biggest focus is is the culinary arts. So, Mexican food, I think, not a lot of people fully understand. You know that sauces are just as complex as like the French culinary arts. Mm. Yes, you know, mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of bracing. There's a lot of uh, like sauces, there's a lot that goes into those sauces. It's It takes time to make one of the sauces, you know, from like beginning to the end. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm loving that there, um, that wines are starting to expand in different, you know, places, thankfully to technology, really. Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. you have all these places and people had already ridden them off like, you could never get wine from Mexico, mm-hmm. you know, because the, the way that everything is there in terms of like the heat and like mm-hmm. everything. So... I think that that's so great that people are starting to become mm-hmm. chemists almost mm-hmm. with wines and being able to produce it in different countries mm-hmm. and different, yeah. you know, states even, like mm-hmm. Oregon. Yeah. Who would have thought? You know what I mean? Like yep. just thinking of those particular different things. When somebody mm-hmm. bring one out of Colorado, then they'd, they'd have made some magic. But <laughs> I mean, you, you'll be surprised. I mean, I think it all depends too. Like, uh, even just like, let's say within Mexico, you know, there's, there's yeah. jungles, you know, there's, yeah. like, there's terroir that lends itself. So, it's again, it's acquiring the knowledge, you know, and then getting versed in the culture and mm-hmm. learning more about the culture, you know. But I think uh, yeah. there's several places that people will think like, no, no. nothing can really grow there and be like, ah, oh, you'd be surprised. Yeah. You'd be surprised. Yeah. So just cool. like coffee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you think about like coffee coming from different places mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. I want to kind of go into like some tips and tricks that you can give our advanced drinkers in terms of like just how they can, you know, at home yes. get into a wine. Like, where, where would they start? I mean, it, it all depends on where they're at with uh, with wine. Mm-hmm. You know, when I started, I was drinking more of the sweeter kind of wines. They were leaning more towards more fruit. Mm-hmm. Like Moscatos uh, and Rosés. Not, not to wine. that extent, but uh-huh. uh, but there, I, I enjoy those as well. It's just yeah. understanding those. But it was more... Let me see if I could think of a name of... Uh, 
So more of like an amarone, you know, amarone that's uh, that's rich and flavorful. So the mm -hmm. amarone, the way they make that, it's they dehydrate the grapes, right? And then they rehydrate them again. So they make them almost like the raisin state. Oh, wow. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. And so... It brings out more flavor? Well, yeah, I mean... Or it's supposed to? Or? Yeah, when you eat a raisin... You, oh, yeah. Yeah, right? sweet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then how it's like sweet, like powerful, like rich. Uh -huh. so you're just drinking that? Not to that extent, depending oh. on the winemaker. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But it's like, not like Japanese that wine. Yeah. Like, so think that, that but think, think about a little bit uh, toned down. So not, okay. not to that extent as like, oh, you have like raisins in your mouth and it's yeah, like just like, well, not like juice. a lot. Yeah. 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 But yeah. it's okay. uh, it's not necessarily a Moscato, but again, it's got those sweet uh, sweet notes to it. Mm -hmm. uh, even Prisoner, like I think Prisoner, uh, Prisoner, the red blend, it's on the sweeter side. Uh, gradually, within like, Four years, I started drinking different type of try, types of wines. You mm -hmm. know, more of the old world, more wines with minerality. So, it all again, it all depends on the the person themselves. You know, mm -hmm. Is it, yeah. are they just starting getting into wine? Uh, most most wine drinkers, from more people that start into wine, uh, they drink more of the sweeter stuff. So, yeah, even yeah. some moscatos or some of the rieslings yeah. that are sweeter. Yeah, because my sister, she isn't a wine drinker. Mm -hmm. But I introduced her because, uh, I mean, of course, I've been drinking it for a long time. <laughs> but I introduced her to a Riesling to kind of get her started. Yeah. And she was like, I think I can actually do this wine thing. Because yeah. I let her, because I, I didn't want to uh, do a Moscato because mm -hmm. it's like too sweet. Yes. Um, But I wanted to get her to kind of go towards more of mm -hmm. the tangier. So like a Riesling really sits like really nice in the middle mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. someone who wants to start out. But they don't want like a hard Chardonnay mm -hmm. Type feel to it because you yeah. don't start out with that one. That's the one that's going to turn you away. Yes. <laughs> that's yeah. the one's going to turn you away if you're not yeah. really versed in how to do it or yes. um, a Merlot if you want to go red. Mm -hmm. Like that, that'll kind of turn you away too mm -hmm. if you're not, if you don't mm -hmm. have the palate, you know, for those. Yes. Right. So I kind of started her with a Riesling and she was like, I think I can really start this wine thing. And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, like start there and then go in yes. the opposite Sorry, direction. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's, yeah. that's a that's a great way to start. But even for a Riesling, even like the sweetest Riesling, mm -hmm. I mean, unless it's a late harvest, which that's more on like the Moscato type of uh, wine. Mm -hmm. But even the most uh, sweet or the sweetest uh, Riesling, not the sweetest, but the sweeter Riesling, um, when people pay attention to it, it has a lot of complexity and it has some uh, citrus at the back end yeah. that most people just don't see it, don't feel it. Mm -hmm. But it's there, you know, when you pay attention, you're like, okay, this is not just sweet, you know, there's like several layers and then you get hit, you know, like with some of the acidity yes. bounces off. And, and that's the reason why I started her with it, because I knew that piece of it, because I'm, I'm a more sour, savory mm -hmm. type of eater. Yeah. So for that one, I knew that that's uh, what, and I know her palate as well, that she's the same that. as me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, this would be a great balance for you to kind of get that sweetness yes. where you don't feel like you're drinking like hardcore wine mm -hmm. and then but you also get that sour kind of like feel on the end like that acidity mm -hmm. yeah. to it at the end yes so i when she did that she was like i think i can really do right. it yeah, yeah right. i think cool. i could do this so yeah that was um that was definitely a great start yes in terms of trying to get there do you have um tips for people to do wine pairings at home like if they're you know cooking some like almost a, a traditional Mexican style dish or something. Mm -hmm. And if they're trying to figure out how to start doing that, like do you have any yes. suggestions? Uh, yeah, I think it all depends on the dish itself. I think uh, it's best to stay with more of the basic versus more of something that's complex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're trying to make enchiladas at home and you want to do a sauce, you know, that will have like tanginess, that will have uh, spice, that will have maybe a little bit of sweetness as well. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit more complex, a little bit trickier to pair it, right? Okay. But uh, let's say for a mole, you know, a mole that's red, it has pretty much just about every ingredient in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So it's very, very complex, right? So, but you have to figure out the wines and pair it with something that will hold its weight to it, you know, mm -hmm. that will, uh, again, it'll have that dance with that mole. And Zinfandel is one of them, right? Because uh, with the mole, especially if it's uh, depending on where it's from too, and it has some spice notes to it or a certain level of spiciness, the Zinfandel with its richness, and then there's also chocolate in the mole. Zinfandel loves chocolate; they sure go very does. well. Yeah. Yep. So uh, again, okay. it's finding those notes that the wine has, and then finding those Can notes on the food. See if there is a similar or like, isn't it contrast? Aren't there three C's to pairing? Like, 
contrasts and what are they? <laughs> I know what you're talking what about. They, I, can't, I can't remember it's like exactly. Con, but... uh, like texture and, mm -hmm. but they're C's, they're yes. C words. Yes. I have to look that up. Yes. But, mm -hmm. but it has to do with like comparing or contrast, like similar yes. or contrasting yes. and texture, like those yes. sort of things, right? Yes. Well, typically okay. is... I'll look into that a little bit. Yes, yes. Now I will, too. I have to go and uh, get a refresher. I'm pretty sure it's three Cs. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that most uh, people in the wine world would say is if it grows together, it goes together. Right? Okay. So Interesting. Yeah. So if you have a wine that is the, the soils or the winery is located uh, near the ocean, right? And it's white wines, uh, Pinot Grigio, Sauvignon Blanc, whatever it might be, then with it'll go with seafood. Yeah. Cool. You have, uh, I sun. didn't know that. Me neither. <laughs> <That's> I, <awesome. laughs> I learned it in if it's a, a white meat, mm -hmm. then it's mm -hmm. white. Mm -hmm. you know a white yeah. wine mm -hmm. and then if it's like a red meat then you just do a red one yes. like that was my basic first introduction yes. into doing it and that's that's 100 percent correct that's typically the case but mm -hmm. again when you analyze so when you get more into wine and and uh, regions and so on it's interesting you'll see white wines very close to the ocean you also see it with again poultry mm -hmm. and then if they also have red wines there you also see some type of uh beef or protein that goes well with yeah. uh, with the red wine. So. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much thank you. for you coming in thank and you. letting us taste your wines. Um, and hopefully that everything that is, I hope these blow up a lot bigger thank too, you. because I am so excited for you guys. And you guys are just, first of all, you're good people. Thank you. That were mm -hmm. good, kind people. Like I was telling you earlier about your wife. Like your mm -hmm. wife is just a kind, but she might not be kind to you. Because she's <laughs> kind to all no, of she us. Is, she she's is amazing. She, she's I amazing. love, every time I see her, when I walk in, I'm just yes. like, there she is. You know what I mean? Like yes. it's just, and then you and your cousin Esther, I'm just yes. at the same time. I just love the Thank surrounding you. and just yes. everything. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a good hangout spot. But you're also getting the good food. Like Thank that is you. so yeah. important to know that I also can come there and I'm and I'm going to enjoy Thank my you. meal. I'm not just suffering through it because I like the company. Yeah. Because that you. really does make a difference. Absolutely. I've been to places where I just suffer through it because I just like the bartender. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm just like, uh, <laughs> like I'm oh, here because cool. you're so cool. Yeah. 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 But yeah. your food is trash. But <laughs> <laughs> for you guys, it's the whole, it's like just a whole experience. Yes. And now that you're about to add this another layer. Yes. Of an experience for mm. your guests so to be awesome. able to come in and interactively, like get to taste wine, yes. tell you why they think that this one pairs and it doesn't. That just it, it just makes it the reason why this is going to be such a, a huge success. Thank you. And I can't wait to people know that I know you when you become famous. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm like, listen, guys, I, I already knew him like already. I knew him already. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, best of luck to everything that you, you guys have going on. Thank you. I'm here for it, obviously. I literally be there for it. Thank you. Um, and, yeah, thank you so much for coming in Pleasure. and talking with us. Well, one more thing uh, before, yeah. before I head out. Uh, it's uh, We're also working on starting a wine club membership, right? Uh, okay. So, Don't threaten me with a good time. And that's, and that's also going to be, again, we're working on making it to the individual's personality and, and likings, you know, of, like, wines yeah. right so i want to be able to mold and send them wines that they will really drink and enjoy right yeah awesome versus yeah. some some wine club uh memberships you get what you get and it's like you right. may or may not necessarily trust like me wine, i'm so. part of one now i've I got definitely 30 bottles that i don't drink in that yeah. Before. <laughs> yeah and and the most important thing uh i i did a podcast earlier on uh, mm -hmm. i think at the beginning of the year or no i think it was last year actually when we first opened the restaurant within a few months mm -hmm. with a zeke Oh, yeah. And uh, Scarlett, my daughter, who's nine, right? She saw the, the podcast over and over again. And mm -hmm. I, yeah. I I forgot to mention her and how Aww. she actually literally worked at the restaurant with me. You know, she would come in and hang out and yeah. she would help clean up. Uh, and she was pretty bummed out that I did not mention her. So, Scarlett, you're amazing. Shout out to Scarlett. Aww, Love you. Scarlett. Thank you for the help. <laughs> Uh, as well as my wife, she's been supportive. She's been there. Yes. You know, uh, I haven't been home much past the uh, year Our and a half thing, or two yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. So she's been very supportive, and of course, my uh, my other daughters. You know, Natalia, Vanessa, and Valeria. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, they're, they're Love it. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank Good you, family once again. Thank you. Thank you. 
to yours. I'm mm-hmm. empty, but I'll cheers you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for listening and watching Odd Pairing. So please subscribe, like, rate, and comment with your favorite drinking stories and curiosities about adult beverages. Yeah. Cheers. I'm going to happy hour. Who's driving? I'm going to walk.